What you just heard were two accidents. The first was the car crashing into an object. The second was the car's occupants being thrown against parts of the car's interior or being thrown through open doors onto the highway. It's this second accident, this accident inside an accident, that causes human injuries. When a car hits a tree and stops suddenly, the passengers continue moving forward. Forward, that is, until they strike something inside the car, like the steering wheel. Doctors, automobile designers, policemen, researchers are vitally concerned with their problem of crash injuries. Actually, automobiles have never been safer. Based on miles traveled, accidents have declined 57% in the last 20 years. Yet, accidents continue to happen because human error can't be completely eliminated. The problem is this. 38,000 persons are killed each year and one and a quarter million injured. The question is, what can and is being done about it? Here is Dr. Russell Harris, who was called out last night to treat the injury case you witnessed. This morning, he and his wife are on their way to the annual convention of the American Medical Association. Dr. Harris is particularly interested in the part of the convention that concerns crash injuries. He knows that researchers working with doctors and policemen have studied thousands of actual accidents and compiled revealing statistics about what happens to people inside a car that crashes. But he wants to see and understand it in more detail from the scientific exhibits he will see and the medical papers he will hear. To find out specifically about the extent of the problem, he and John O. Moore, director of crash injury research at Cornell University Medical College, go onto the actual convention floor to see Lieutenant Frederick McGuire. Dr. Harris asks how critical crash injuries are to the armed forces. Well, about one third of all our hospital admissions are due to motor vehicle accidents and about 85% of all our off-duty hospital admissions are due to the same cause. And these men, when they do get on the sick list, spend an average of 42 days there. In the Korean War, for example, we took up on the sick list twice as many Marine Corps and Naval personnel due to motor vehicle accidents than were placed there because of enemy action. From reports like this, Dr. Harris obtained a clearer understanding of the problem involved, its immensity, its total effect. Then he asked about the all-important Cornell statistics on crash injuries and how the statistics are collected. Mr. Moore explained that to collect the facts, doctors and police in states all over the nation carefully study thousands of individual accidents and make detailed reports to train Cornell researchers. Then Mr. Moore took Dr. Harris to Sergeant Elmer Paul of the Indiana State Police one of the groups that makes crash injury facts available. Sergeant Paul explained how the reports were filled out at the local level. This is the vehicle report the trooper completes about crash damage, collapse of structure. He also lists the causes of the injuries. Then we have the medical report, which the physician completes, the actual injury itself. As the talk continued, Dr. Harris satisfied himself that the crash injury statistics were as valid as they were vital. Then, at the Cornell booth on the convention floor, he asked, Well, Mr. Moore, how would you sum up the practical results of your work in facts and figures? Well, Dr. Harris, I would attempt to do it this way. When the passengers are thrown out of the vehicle, 54% of them suffer a moderate through fatal grade injury. But when the passengers remain inside the protective body of the car, the percentage of people suffering moderate through fatal grade injuries drops to 24%, less than half. In other words, you're twice as safe if you stay inside the car during an accident. Then Dr. Harris asked if staying inside the car was enough. How do people who remain inside get hurt? Well, Dr. Harris, we've found that 40% of all drivers who are hurt are hurt by being thrown against the steering wheel. 
suffering primary injuries of the chest. About 38% of the passengers in the right front seat are injured by contact against the instrument panel. Mr. Moore explained that using these recent findings, automobile safety engineers work to develop devices to protect the passenger in the event of an accident. Specifically, the engineers work to reduce injuries from the parts of the cars singled out by the Cornell statistics, the steering wheel, the instrument panel, or by ejection from the car. Here, for example, is a new steering wheel being tested in the laboratory. And crash padding for the instrument panel. After years of laboratory tests, the devices were tested in actual and violent crashes at the test track. Engineers here are putting electronically wired dummies into cars that will be crashed together. This will be a typical intersectional crash. This car will be hit on the front quarter by the car coming down the track. In slow motion now, notice how the safety belt protects the right front seat dummy from the windshield, while the unbelted dummy in the driver's seat crashes into the sun visor and windshield area. And here is the same crash as you would see it from the rear seat, 20 feet to go. Each dummy and each car is literally covered with devices to let the engineer know what forces are unleashed in the crash. Here is a crash into a barrier. <laughs> Dr. Harris now knew how the crash injury statistics told automobile engineers which parts of the car caused the most injuries. And he could see how the engineers used the statistics to develop the new safety devices. For a closer look at them, he returned to Sergeant Paul's exhibit and asked for a description of the devices available. Here we have the new door lock, which is an improved version over last year's. We have a crash pad on the instrument panel, which will absorb force. Mm -hmm. We have the safety belt to retard the forced ejection of occupants. We have here the padded sun visor, which will protect the head and the forward impact. And we have the new steering wheel, with the recessed hub, which is much better than the previous type steering wheel. So Dr. Harris saw that something really significant already had been done to reduce the problem. But as a doctor, he wanted to know what he could do in his day-to-day -day work to help. To get the answer, he sought out Dr. Fletcher Woodward, chairman of the American Medical Association's official committee on medical aspects of automobile injuries and deaths. Dr. Harris asked about the role of a busy physician. A physician should be interested both in the prevention of these accidents as well as in the definitive care of the injured. And in consideration of prevention, he should consider these conditions of the nervous system. For instance, does the patient have epilepsy? Is this patient senile? He should also consider the question of his cardiovascular system. These things are all important at times in the causation of automobile crashes. He should also be very careful as to the types of drugs that he may prescribe, especially the drugs so commonly used today, the tranquilizing drugs and the antihistaminic drugs. These drugs at times may interfere with driving skill. He should also consider the question of the special senses, for instance, vision, peripheral vision, central vision, and the other special senses, particularly the hearing and the question of vertigo. Another thing that he should pay particular attention to is if a patient asks him, Doctor, am I fit to drive a car? Well, Doctor, this is the type of information I've been hoping to find at these exhibits and here at the convention. At the special medical symposium on automobile crash injuries, Dr. Harris heard 11 papers that dramatized the firm resolve of American doctors to play an increasing role in the progress being made. And he heard the automobile industry commended for its major contribution to that progress. Finally, he heard Dr. Woodward propose the formation of a national foundation 
like the Polio Foundation, to coordinate the work of all groups interested in reducing highway accidents, so that still more knowledge can be gained and more progress made. Then Dr. Harris went to the Ford Scientific Exhibit, where he saw solid examples of the progress being made by the industry to reduce highway injuries and death. And he heard a report on a speech given by Henry Ford II at the National Safety Forum in Dearborn, Michigan, when the five safety devices were first introduced. Furthermore, we wish to announce that all of the pioneer safety features and the specifications and design of those features developed by Ford Motor Company are to be made available to any automobile company that wants them. Well, to me, this is pretty solid evidence that these people mean exactly what they say. Yes, and those devices are based on design criteria that was gathered by police, physicians, and researchers cooperating in local communities just like yours, Dr. Harris. Now, tell me, Mr. Moore, do you have any statistics from the field on the effect of these devices? I mean, do they actually reduce injuries in case of accidents? Yes, for the first time since these protective devices were introduced last fall, we can state clinically that the severe crushing injury to the chest of the driver has been reduced by one half by the safety steering wheel. The new safety door locks have significantly reduced the frequency of door openings during impact. In fact, in non-overturn accidents, some designs have reduced this occurrence by 60%. We have the same trend from seat belts. The energy absorbing instrument panel and visor padding are having a marked effect in reducing the frequency of the lacerative type injury of the face and head. In our opinion, if we could suddenly equip all 50 million of the vehicles on our highways with these properly engineered devices, the safety steering wheel, the safety door lock, the seat belt, and the instrument panel and visor padding, we could expect to reduce by one-third the crash injuries we see. This would mean that one-half million persons annually would escape injury, and the great proportion of all of our deaths would be reduced to recoverable injury. Well, that's very encouraging. But what about the future? Where do we go from here? The future, the future will be written tomorrow, next month, next year, and on and on. It will be written by the many hands of progress, inspired by dedicated and inquisitive minds, by the researcher, the physician, the policeman, the automobile engineer, and most importantly, by you, the driver, the one with the most to gain. In presenting this film, the American Medical Association acknowledges the cooperation of Ford Motor Company.